Hello Senior Economics class, this is Mr. Heal and today I'm going to do a video lecture on Chapter 6.1 dealing with combining supply and demand. Now that we've learned about supply separately and demand separately, it's time to combine them because this is really how prices are, are produced in the marketplace where the quantity demanded crosses the quantity supply. So, here's the objectives that we're going to go through and understand what this thing called equilibrium is. We're going to happen we're going to find out what happens when you're not in equilibrium or disequilibrium. And the government's going to muck around in the uh, in the economy a little bit with something called price controls and rent controls and price controls and price floors and price ceilings. We'll go through all that and then we'll analyze the impact on the government messing around with the economy. Uh, specifically we'll get things called price ceilings and price floors. So let's just make sure we start out with understanding how to label a properly labeled supply and demand curve. Really super important to do this. In fact, I'm going to ask you to do this so you got to know it. So the real quick and easy way to do this, just draw a graph and an X and then start labeling stuff. Okay, so what goes up, up on the um, horizontal is always going to be price and use the dollar sign to indicate here we're in the U.S., Okay, and what's now on the bottom, instead of quantity supplied or quantity demanded, it's real simple. It's simply quantity, okay, because it's going to be either one or the other as you talk about it. And, of course, the upward sloping line, the upward sloping line that uh, the quantity supplied increases as the price goes, this is simply going to be the supply curve and the downward sloping line inverse to price increases in terms of the quantity demanded is going to be the demand curve. Now, the interesting point, really key for you to see, we're going to have this point in the middle. This is called equilibrium. So we're going to label this E. Oops, sorry. We're going to label this E. All right. And then down here, we're going to label this quantity E. And we're going to label this price E or equilibrium. That's it. That is a properly labeled supply and demand curve. So you've got to know that because we're going to be using some language now that's going to be reflective of this curve. So please keep this in mind. So let's go through an example where we're, go we're given, uh, in this case, a demand schedule, a market demand schedule, and a market supply schedule for soda. Okay, remember a market demand schedule, how much good uh, will the market buy at various different prices? And the market supply schedules, how much of uh, a good firms will, uh, will be willing and able to sell at various different prices, right? So we're going to talk about, in this case, soda. So if we had the, uh, the market uh, supply schedule, it would look something like this, okay? Weekly sodas based on the price. So if you look again, if you look at properly labeling stuff, where you have price here, in this case it's just the supply curve, because so quantity supply is okay. We don't know, there's, there's no demand curve yet, so we're not sure where equilibriums are and all that good stuff, but it's simply labeled properly here, and, and as you can see, it, at, one, at one dollar, the suppliers are not willing to supply that much, maybe 50, at two it's 100, and 150 at res respectively. Okay, so that's just simply the supply curve for soda, the market supply curve for soda. Well, what about the market demand curve for soda? In this case, we know, we know that it's a downward sloping line, okay, because as the price goes down, right, the market's going to want more quantity demanded. So that makes a lot of sense. The law of demand exists. So that's good. So here's the kicker. Now we're going to put them together. Okay, for the very first time, you're now seeing a supply and demand curve. That's why every now in class you see me crossing my arms and making an X. Okay, so now, again, we're now into a properly labeled, okay, uh, uh, supply and demand curve where we have price, we have supply, we have demand, we have quantity, and here's the thing. We have equilibrium is right here, and if you're going to label this properly, this would be P, E at 3, okay, and... QE at 150. And this plot is all based on this particular combination of the two market demand schedules. You have the uh, quantity market demand schedule and the quantity supply market demand schedule. And so you just simply plot every price point, okay, and you'll end up with a graph just like this. So it's really important that we understand what this means and clearly 
any everybody that wants to pay three dollars is going to get it. Okay, we have a equilibrium where where the people that are paying three bucks they're going to get it. Okay, um, they're going to get quantity and and the market's going to supply 150 of those. Okay, so that is called equilibrium. Now we sort of know how to how to come how to find that. Right? Does that make some sense? Well. What happens now? Again, if I'm going to ask you to plot one of these, all right, we're going to have to. You're going to have to know this data, so you will. Okay, so that's cool. Now, here's the thing: Why does the market price fall if all of a sudden the price is above equilibrium? So now we're now we're going to be out of equilibrium. So here's a diagram where, okay, if we were at equilibrium, hopefully you'd recognize if we were at equilibrium. We would be at a price of three bucks and a quantity supplied of five, right? Well, what happens if the problem says, well, no, the price is going to be seven? Now, this is super simple. If you have the curves, you simply go over to each curve and mark a point and then go straight down to where it intersects with the quantity, right? So, in this case, you're going to have. Would you agree less quantity demanded, quantity demanded is going to be less than quantity supplied because we're on the supply curve here, so this is going to be the quantity supplied number, number excuse me, and we're on the demand curve here, so this is the demand curve, right? So this is going to be quantity demanded. Now remember, if we were exactly in the middle, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Would you agree to that? So if we were right here, five would be the quantity supplied, which would equal the quantity demanded. But we are not. We are now in a situation where it is unequal, where we've changed something somehow, right? So we have an issue here of a surplus, okay? We have a surplus. Why do we have a surplus? In other words, we have more stuff than we're selling. Why? Because quantity supplied is clearly greater than quantity demanded. So the suppliers are going to pump out seven of these, but the demanders are only going to demand 2.5. So we've got a surplus. We absolutely have a surplus. Okay. So in that case, here's a is going back to sort of this uh, price per soda, this market and and uh, market quantity supplied and quantity demand schedule, right? And so if you have a situation where um, basically, you have a price uh, equilibrium that should be, again, you should know this, but you should be saying this out loud. You have a price equilibrium of 3, so P equals 3, and then a quantity equilibrium, QE equals 150. However, what if we're dealing here with a, with a $5 uh, target? So the, the industry, the, the suppliers want to charge 5 bucks. Well, if they want to charge 5 bucks, we're on this line right here. True? Okay, the industry wants to supply. Okay, the industry wants to supply. I want to just erase some of this stuff so you can see it a little bit clearer. So the industry wants to supply 250, right? Because we're at five, you draw a line straight down, and you're 250. Well, remember this is the supply curve, so this is the quantity supplied equals 250, right? Well, wait a minute. At that price, since the price is going up, we know the law of demand is going to kick in, and therefore the quantity demanded is only going to be 50. So how much of a surplus do we have? Well, it's simple. It's quantity supplied minus quantity demanded, which equals 200, right? So 250 minus 50 equals 200. So we have 200 more stuff out there. And quite frankly, you know, this is what's going to happen is if this is true, the suppliers are going to have to do something. They're going to have to lower the price. Okay, this is an example where if we have a if we have a surplus in the market, if we have a surplus in the market, the suppliers are going to have to lower the price to entice the demanders to increase their demand for the good. This is how you clear the price. If you have too much inventory, like wrapping paper, Christmas wrapping paper on December 26th, what happens? Well, it's pretty clear what happens. These the uh the um uh, the companies, uh, whether it's Michaels or, oh, I don't know, CVS or something like that, they will literally start to lower the price. They lower the price to bring it back down so they can actually start getting rid of inventory. So they want to lose the surplus, and they want to eventually get down to zero. 
Okay, so that's important for them. So they lower the price. That's why you can always get wrapping paper cheaper right after Christmas. All right, well, what about the opposite situation? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to market price? Why does it rise if, if we're below equilibrium? Okay, so again, here's something to look at. This is now a shortage, the opposite problem we just had. Remember, it's really important. You know what your prices are. Oops, that's too big. We'll get rid of that. So you know what your prices are. In this case, the uh, equilibrium price right, is going to be 3, and the equilibrium quantity is going to be 5. However, for some reason, the market is at a dollar. For whatever reason, don't worry about it. It's just what it is, and if that's going to be the problem you get, then you just have to deal with it. Well, again, it's simple. Just draw a line straight over where it intersects the demand, where it intersects the supply, you draw a line straight down. Now we have quantity supplied and quantity demanded. Obviously, if it's a lower price, you can almost figure out the quantity demanded will be greater than quantity supplied. True? Of course it is, because the price is real low. right? So the demand effect is going to be stronger than the supply effect, and therefore, right, we're going to have a shortage. There's going to be more people wanting stuff than industries rather than supply it, so we're going to have a shortage right before Christmas. The really hot product, uh, the product you can't find anywhere, ends up being in excess demand, shortage. Okay, so what's going to happen in a shortage? You're not going to find any goods. You're going to go to the store shelves and there's going to be a shelf system here and it's going to be empty. You're going to try to, and so what the suppliers can do is raise the price. They can start to raise the price. If they raise the price, the quantity demanded will go down, okay, and will eventually, as this thing